All right, so next up on this project of a million parts, kind of reminds me of the belt sander project. We made this part first, the uh, needle centering device, which we're gonna have to continue this needle centering all the way through all the parts, all the way to the front. Let me grab a 5C collet here. So we modified the 5C collet holder. We're not going to use the uh, uh, keyway alignment because it doesn't matter. All we want is this just to go in here. It's a little bit tight back here. I think I might have to uh, just run some sandpaper in here and clean this up. It's very smooth. It was ground, but it's tight on the collets. And this is a hard inch collet, so you know it's probably pretty reasonably sized, but I don't want the stiction I've got here because this is not going to be an ordinary use. Uh, we got the ring that it, you'll make, it'll make more sense why this ring exists after uh, we complete this next part here. But this ring screws on the end here. And there will be a wave spring that goes right here. So we need to make the piece that connects right here next, <laughs> if that makes sense. So the piece that goes here is going to attach to the spindle. So I've got to make a threaded piece that'll butt up against the, thrindle, the spindle th stop right here and the threads. Uh, and then it's going to have another flange like this and then a section that screws to the center of the 5C collet. Then in between the two flanges will be a wave spring, a fairly tight wave spring. And the point of that is that the wave spring is going to constantly push this piece forward onto the 5C collet, which holds it tight. And then I'm gonna to have to make another device that's gonna squeeze these two flanges together that will make the 5C collet open up. And when it opens up, the next needle is going to push in. It's got to push all the way through this whole section here and push the, the needle at the end out the back and the new needle in the next, you know, section as it pushes needles all the way through after they're welded. So this has to be smoother. I'm going to have to definitely smooth this up a little bit. Maybe uh, just uh, remove a little material, some emery cloth in there so that this is very smooth because I don't want to have to use a lot of spring force because when I squeeze these together, I don't want to have to squeeze and overcome friction plus. Uh, I just want to have to overcome the amount of force needed to hold the needle tightly enough. And, and fortunately here, the needle does not have to be that tightly held in the 5C collet because all it is is enough force so that when this rotates, the pin rotates with it so you can weld it. There's no force on the pin that's going to stop it, you know, try and stop it from rotating. So it's going to be a minimal amount of force. It's pretty much going to be between totally loose and slightly uh, slightly held, and that's all it needs to be. So we're gonna make the piece in here, and that's actually gonna be multiple pieces. So let's get started. As for the part that mates up here, we need something with uh, these threads, which is 2.258 internal threads. So eight threads per inch, and it's going to seat up against this relief here. I thought it was going to uh, seat up against this flange, but that flange must be for the bearings, not this, because this is proud of the threads. So unless you cut a big relief into it, it won't seat all the way back, but this will be fine. So I need something just a tiny bit longer than this with threads. And then that part will reduce to about, I don't know, one and a quarter inches, something like that, then go back up to a flange this size and then we'll reduce back down and have internal threads that made up here. I did find 5C collet. Oops. <laughs> I did find 5C collet specifications. Boy, was this an act of God. So everywhere I go, including the machinist handbook, say that none of these sizes are exact and they vary between manufacturer. Why can't people agree on a standard? That's just crazy. Like this says 10, 10 degrees one minute. Uh, <laughs> uh, most of the 5C collet uh, things say 10 degrees, so I don't know what's exactly. I go, oh, then this is plus two minutes. Uh, I don't know if that really is a thing. Uh, <laughs> this is from Hardinge, so it's probably somewhat accurate. But in any case, I'm going to turn this into an actual drawing at some point because this one's barely readable. It's, it was a very low resolution print that I upscaled, but uh, the specifications are here from Hardinge. I'm going to take this as closest to gospel, although this says these dimensions not to be used for manufacturing purposes, purposes identification only. 
It's like, come on guys, really? Doesn't anyone have a 5C? Even the machinist handbook says these are only rough estimates. And they don't give any of the internal dimensions, they give just the external dimensions. So, there you go. Simple facing operation. This is 303 stainless. Next up, I'm just gonna bore the center out for three quarters of an inch because I'm gonna replace one thing I want to keep the weight down, so I'm going to remove a bunch of the stainless steel there, but also I want to have a insert material that lets the needles slide very freely. So I'm going to use Delrin or Acetyl. Looks like we need to slow this down. That was 440 RPM, but I think we're going to have to go even slower. Let's call it... 180 RPM. And that's it. That's all she wrote. All right, well, hopefully that's enough. The surface finish from the reamer it's not superb by any stretch. Let me stop it there. You can see scratch marks, but hopefully we're pretty close to right on three quarters. And then I can get a piece of Delrin to match. And the another advantage is I have to drill the three millimeter hole all the way through the material. And this is like uh, six inches or five inches. And with Delrin, it would be a lot easier to make sure I go straight than it would be if I was using something like stainless where there's enough uh, force on the drill bit that it might deflect, so it won't be as accurate a cut. So hopefully I'm gonna gain that advantage too. We will see. Now we need to bore this guy to a diameter of 2.034 inches, 1.1 inches deep. And in fact, remember how I talked about cutting off the peaks of the, of the threads because the peaks, the top eighth is missing? I might remove enough material here to already have that removed. Then I won't have to plunge in as far. I think that's a good idea. I think we'll do that. First up, we're going to chamfer the leading edge. And I can engage the half nut on any line because it's eight threads per inch. However, and uh, I'm going in 189 thousandths. I'm, I'm going in straight. So first pass, we'll do 25 thousandths because it's going to be a fairly light cut. Only the tip's going to be cutting. Let's see how we engage right here. That looks good. Okay, that lines up perfectly. You might notice here, remember I said the top eighth of the thread is missing and the bottom quarter of the total thread depth is missing. You notice the top eighth of these threads are missing here. Uh, the Sterrett, uh, when they made this, made sure that they removed that material because they knew that it wasn't supposed to be there so that way it'll match the threads. However, that means that it barely bites initially because it doesn't come to a sharp point. But All right, first part done. I 
I had to go back and go over the threads because I lost the beginning, but we're good. We're meeting up with the chamfer now. Uh, I put a 45 chamfer on the front because I didn't have a 60, which is probably my mistake because this would have mated cleanly, uh, but it's still mating with the front of it and we're good. And we should be done. Looking good. Then we come over. We're gonna do the quarter inch disc here and why not go in there as well? Although I might I could flip the part around and cut it from the other side, but let's uh, let's just do it with this tool since we're having so much fun with it. So now we have uh, several of the major features. We could turn this part around. We can actually cut a bunch off this bar too, because uh, I only need about an inch sticking out. I could just part the whole thing off, but I think that might be harder than band sawing it and then cleaning up from there. So I think that's where we'll go. And then we're gonna turn all this material off here and thread the end. Uh, first, let's do some chamfering. Uh, I got my tail stock in the way to chamfer the last bit. Pull the live center off. Go gently. So now we're going to reverse the part around and we switch to the four jaw chuck so we can dial it in and so that we can use these 3D printed uh, soft jaws. And all the plastics job is, is to hold this brass piece in place that will press against the jaw itself. So the plastic doesn't take any of the force. It just holds the brass piece in place, which is, you know, what you're fighting with with soft jaws most of the time anyways. Oops, what am I doing? <laughs> so I didn't make, I didn't make the uh, plastic bits uh, tight enough, but they do hold it in place when you set it back in. So it's good. It'll work. It won't uh, fall out while I'm trying to set up the part which is what you need. This was iteration one of my soft jaws. And they all include a set screw to hold them in place, but they're plenty tight enough that that's not a problem. And then the part, you go in here. And I guess this one's a bit too loose. There's like several generations of these right here as I was trying to get them to fit. Yeah, that one's too loose. I'm gonna have to, adjust that I think oh look at that I can set that all the way back that'll work cool then I can drop the brass bits in a little further there we go that'll do that way it'll be more likely to be square and I can indicate off either of any of these surfaces here okay that's within about a thousandth I think we're going to call that good. So remember, the plastic is not holding any of the force here. The plastic just holds the brass in place long enough to be clamped between the part so the brass doesn't fall away. And I think I could iterate this differently, but I need to do something a little better to keep that brass in place. So I'll work on changing that design a little bit. But uh, other than that, I think we're pretty good.
So now we need to face this guy off because, so first of all, that needs to be the right diameter to fit this, which it is. It gives just a tiny bit of slop and the spring fits in there nicely. That's great. Then this overall needs to be one inch. So it doesn't have to be exactly an inch, but that's what we're shooting for here. So here is, uh, here is Z naught. And where is an inch? Just for curiosity. Oh, I got to remove a fair amount. We'll set it, make that my zero point in an inch, and I'm just going to face the ends of this guy off. All right, ran a scratch pass. Thread gauge 24 th threads per inch looks good. Okay. Should be really, oh, look at that. Nailed it. All right, so here's this piece completed. I gotta clean it out a little bit, but uh, there it is. This side matches the spindle. This is the 5C collet, looser than I would like, although the threads still engage perfectly and tighten up. It's not a lot of force on it, but again, you know, as a machinist, you wanna make your everything precise, and that is definitely not, I don't know why it's almost always that I have to cut deeper than I expect. And this time I stopped at 70 instead of 72 and it was already passed. So go figure anyways, moving on. Last part, we got to do a Delrin insert for this guy that will also continue through the end of the 5C collet to be just before the end of the 5C collet so that the needles will be guided right on in to this whole assembly. And uh, once we're done with that, we should be pretty close to done with this part of the project. All right, so next up here, we just need to finish the needle guiding insert. So part of it needs to be three quarter and the other part can be as large as a little over an inch. We're gonna use the seven eighths diameter of this material. Uh, so first we're gonna face off the end. I don't need to be going that fast. This is Seidel material or Delrin copy. Uh, it comes from McMaster Card. It's made by Mitsubishi. It's very straight when it comes and is generally just excellent material to work with. Gotta love it. Although amazing material to work with, it doesn't break chips very well. And so you end up with uh, spaghetti. Next up, we have to drill a three millimeter hole, 4.25 inches in, and this is the back of it. So it doesn't need to be flared on the back. It needs to be flared on the other side. So when we turn it around, we'll drill that side uh, with a flare. So, so I'm just leaving the tailstock loose. And when it starts to load up, it pushes the stale tailstock back. You can also hear it. And I think that's about it for the hole on this side. So we're gonna flip it around, cut it to length, and uh, we should be good to go. I'm just gonna part this guy off. It's good the hole went past this point. I can turn this around. And we can put the flare in so that uh, when the needles get pushed in, they won't run into a lip or anything. Gonna use a 60 degree chamfer bit. That'll give a generous lead in. And I think we're done. All right, so here's, here's all the parts going together for the final assembly for this section of it. Now this spindle, I've got the separate spindle insert, if you want to call it. This is, you know, without the bearings and the housing. This will actually be screwing on something with bearings and a housing, but this is just something to get you started uh, with 
you know, thread, make sure the threads meet and all that sort of thing. So to tighten this guy up, you can just pop these keys in here. One on each side, except the uh, guy gets side that I beveled a little bit. And you can just tighten this guy. All righty. Then on this guy, attaches this guy. And this guy goes inside to guide the pins. And then I did uh, take some scotch bright material inside there and polished the inside of that. So now the 5C collet, remember before how it was sticking? Now it slides in and out very smoothly. I don't know about the uh, spring yet. I'm still playing with spring tensions, but this will give you the general idea. So this piece goes up inside here, meets up with the end of the 5C collet. It actually is a little shy of that on purpose. And actually, so that I can show you this appropriately, this hasn't been drilled out for a needle yet of three millimeters. So let me find a slightly larger one of these. Like this one here, this one's an eighth, bigger than three millimeters by more than a full millimeter. All righty. Okay, so here's the whole thing together. These two pieces will be squeezed together to release the pins. So I've got to make something that comes down, up and over, and we'll squeeze these guys together. Fair amount of force there, so I've got several different springs I can play with, but hopefully that'll hold it tightly enough. Then as we're welding, the needle will fit in here, and hopefully the needles should just, without any issue at all, should go right down the middle of this guy. Oops. Which they seem to be without any issue. So that's good news. That's exactly what I wanted. So I need to play with spring tension here and this will become more, uh, this will make more sense later on when I show you the rest of this setup that this goes with. So this spindle is going to be flush right here. And all that you're going to see is this part sticking out right here. Um, this will be the spindle assembly on the laser welder itself. So that's about it. Give you a good look at it all together. And that's the parts we've got so far. That's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you find it useful. Hope to see you on the next part.